Okay, let's talk about the MOGEA exam. And this is the Missouri General Education Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are a teacher or you are preparing to be a teacher in the state of Missouri um, and you gotta take this exam. Now this, uh, versus like the MEGA, uh, the M, let me just write this out over here, MEGA, I believe this is more like the certification assessments for your particular you know, subject uh, area. So whether you're gonna be a math teacher, science teacher, elementary teacher, you usually you know, you're gonna be taking the MEGA assessments where uh, if I'm not mistaken, everybody's still gotta pass this MOGEA, whether you're in a teacher program or um, just, you know, any teacher at that because it's um, general education. So if you're a math teacher, you're going to be testing on social studies, reading, I, I guess, maybe not social studies, but definitely like reading, English, etc. So if you're an elementary teacher, you're going to be testing on math, etc. So a lot of states are having these kind of general um, education assessments. I think this is kind of a newer thing. I don't know all the specifics to it, but let me go ahead and just introduce myself. My name is John. I am a middle and high school math teacher, even top beyond that. And I'm the founder of Tab Class Math. So definitely know what it's like to um, take, you know, certification exams. They're not easy, although I didn't have to take a uh, general education assessment. Um, again, I think this is kind of a newer thing, and I mean newer, maybe within the last five, five to ten years, definitely. Uh, before I had to um, take my exam, I actually took the Praxis exam. So every state is different. Um, again, if you're in Missouri, you'll be taking the MEGAs, but if you go to a lot of other states, you'll be using the Praxis. California uses the CBES, CSET. It's all different types of exams, but in general, they're pretty similar. Um, there's some differences, but you know, especially if one state's Common Core or not, etc. But again, you know, uh, the general education assessment. You know, pretty much everyone has to take this, okay? And what I'm going to be talking about is the area of math. So before I get going on this particular kind of pop quiz here, um, I want to tell you that I actually offer uh, an MOGEA, um, Missouri General Education Assessment, uh, math prep course. Very, very comprehensive. aligns very nicely to what will be on the math section of the exam. So if you're concerned about math, um, I'm going to leave the link to that course in the description of this video. You can check that out. Okay, so what I have here is a basic math problem. And I'm going to, of course, solve it. We'll talk about it here in a second. But this is something that you should be able to do, definitely, um, to do well on this assessment. Now, if you get this right, and this is just a basic geometry problem, it's not in any way saying, hey, you're all clear, ready to take this test. But if you don't, if you're really lost on this problem, that's a, you know, a flag, a red flag that, hey, you've got some work to do. And even if you're like strong in math in high school or college, it doesn't make a difference. You still need to review all these areas. Okay, so if you want to pause the video and uh, do this problem, actually, let me explain the problem. I have a triangle here, and I'd like you to tell me the length of this side of the triangle. Okay, that's X. So it's a particular type of triangle. Okay, now if you have enough if you understand the, the question here now, you're like, okay, I know what he's talking about, I'm gonna do the prompt, then I would say pause the video and do it. Now, I'm gonna give you an additional clue for those of you out there that are like, mm, I'm not quite sure, I think I kinda of know what to do. I'm gonna give you a clue, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right, so here is the formula that we're gonna to need to, to solve this uh, problem. So this problem, Okay, I mean, now that you have this formula, you definitely should be like, oh, okay, now I know exactly what to do. Okay, now if you're still lost, then you just want to keep watching the video because I'm going to go ahead and solve it now. But uh, hey, listen, if you, you don't get this problem right, it's not the end of the world. It's just a, you know, pop quiz, right? You get just a quick uh, sense of where you're at. But definitely for this assessment, you would need to be able to um, do a problem like this. Okay, it's pretty, pretty standard. All right, so what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about a right triangle, right triangle. Now a right triangle, and this is in, this triangle is a right triangle, it's indicated by this little box in the corner here, is a triangle where one of the angles is 90 degrees, okay? So when we have a right triangle, we can use this formula right here, okay? This formula is actually what we call the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem, okay? So whole, 
big, this is extremely, extremely powerful and, and very important in geometry, but it's the Pythagorean theorem and basically it, it's a relationship between the sides of a right triangle. And basically what it says is this, okay? We have three lengths of this triangle. We have this length, we have this length, and we have, uh, let me use this different color, uh, this length here, okay? This longest side of a right triangle, you can always tell, right, uh, what's the longest side, you can just visually tell, but it's the, it's the side opposite of the right angle, is the C, okay? We call this the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle. Now, this A and B are the lengths of the other sides, these, uh, these two sides. So this can be A, and this could be B or X. They're just variables, okay? But basically it says if we square, if we add up the squares of the two smaller sides, that's equal to the square of the hypotenuse. All right, so let's go ahead and put this in action, okay? So here I have X, okay? Let me get rid of this B here. Do it this way. All right, so if I square this side, X squared plus the square of this side, 4 squared, that is going to be equal to 10 squared. Now, really, you know, I, I would want to do this in a more formal way and teach the whole Pythagorean theorem and do a lot of different problems. So don't want to turn this into a full lesson on the Pythagorean theorem because, you know, that's a, uh, you know, you know, deserves a good amount of time, okay, to kind of cover that and do different type of problems, etc. But if you understand where I'm going with this, then, then that's good, okay? All right, so now we go ahead, well, now we have to go ahead and do this basic algebra to solve this. So we have x squared plus 4 squared. So this squared, right, this side squared plus this side squared, which I have right here, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is this side squared there, right? So now let's go ahead and just do the algebra. So I have x squared plus 4 squared is 16 is equal to 10 squared, which is 100. All right, so how do I solve this basic equation here? So let's go ahead and just, what we need to do is kind of get the x squared part by itself. So I'm gonna subtract 16 from both sides of this equation. So I'm gonna get x squared is equal to 100 minus 16, which in this case will be 84. Okay, so now what do I do next here? How do I get, how do I solve for that x? Okay, so what I need to do is, now I'm going to go ahead and grab my calculator, probably should have done that uh, before we started the video, but let me grab my calculator here. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually take the square root of both sides, okay? So when I take the square root of x squared, I get x. Okay, so the square root of 84, I could leave my answer as a square root of 84, but let's get this as a decimal. So let me grab my calculator. So the square root of 84 is approximately 9.165 or so. Okay, so this is a good approximation of that length. So this length here would be around 9.165. So that is how we solve that. Okay, so. The Pythagorean Theorem, again, tremendously important in geometry. Um, you can almost guarantee that it's going to be on this assessment, okay? So it's just one of many basic, I would probably a good way to kind of think about what's on here mathematically. It's just like high school level math, okay? You're not going to have to be doing calculus or trigonometry or whatnot, but you're going to have to be, well, trigonometry, I'm not... Let me just double check. I don't have the standards right in front of me, but you'll be surprised on some of the things that you may be tested upon. But in general, if you're strong in high school level math, algebra, geometry, basic probability, statistics, and also know your elementary uh, mathematics, fractions, place value, all that stuff, then you should be, you know, all set in terms of the math uh, section of this uh, assessment. Okay. But again, um, it takes you know, effort to pass these uh, certification assessments. Now this one, you know, again, is not, uh, and I'm speaking about it because I haven't had to take one myself. Um, I don't know how it's classified uh, in terms, it's not a certification assessment. I think it's more of a, like a litmus test, hey, that, hey, you have general knowledge of all other areas 
I think that's the way these uh, states that use these asset general education assessments uh, employ them because you likely have to take, well, you definitely have to take a Missouri, an MEGA um, assessment to teach, let's say, middle school math, elementary, which is separate than this. So lots of tests. That's what it means to be a teacher, <laughs> as you well know. It's a lot of work, um, but, you know, you get the reward to, to, to teach, okay? Unfortunately, a lot of people don't really understand what it takes to become a teacher, the amount of education, the amount of effort, um, and then just doing the job, you know, teaching day in, day out. So if you're new to teaching, you know, hey, you're going into a career that's going to be demanding but equally rewarding, okay? So you got to have to have a great attitude about this, but go into this test, take it serious, and, you know, really work hard. And if this is your second time taking it, don't feel bad because many, many teachers um, have to take assessment uh, test or certification test over. That's pretty common. Um, but anyway, so let's go and wrap it up. Again, if you want to check out my um, general, ed general education assessment course, uh, I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video. I've been on YouTube for over 10 years. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos that will help you prepare for the, uh, the math component of this uh, test. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Hey, if you liked the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. What do you think of this test? Uh, it's probably, I know there's some controversy. I don't know about the state of Missouri, but I know some other states. And I wouldn't be surprised in the state of Missouri that a lot of people don't like these assessments. But it, it is what it is. You know, sometimes we don't have choices. But any feedback would be good. Are you taking this for the first time, second time? And I don't even know. I probably should have uh, did a little bit more research about uh, this particular test whether you have to take this um, every year or it's just one and you're done but uh, anyways any feedback would be good um, I definitely wish you all the best in your education career we definitely need great teachers you know I'm speaking uh, as a fellow citizen as a parent you know as a fellow teacher so you know uh, you know you got my complete support I don't even know you out there but listen I know what you I know what it's like to be a teacher and uh, you know that you have a tremendous impact on our society. So good for you. I wish you all the best. Thank you for your time and have a great day.